Welcome to Prajim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 2 of ADO.NET video series. In this session, we'll learn about instantiating a SQL connection object. Using the SQL connection object, why is it important to close a database connection and how to properly close a database connection. Before continuing with this session, I strongly recommend to watch part 1 of this video series where we have discussed the very basics of ADO.NET. From part 1, it should be clear that ADO.NET is a set of classes that helps a, you know, a, a .NET application to communicate with a data source, execute commands, retrieve data, and display that data within the application. Now, we know that ADO.NET has got these important classes within that, the connection, command, data reader, data adapter, and data set classes. Now, Depending on the data provider with which you know the .NET application talks, for example, if the database is SQL Server, then we use the set of classes that are present in system.data.sql client namespace because that is the namespace you know which is the .NET data provider for you know SQL Server, meaning all the classes that helps us to connect to a SQL Server are present in system.data.sql client. So if the if the database is SQL Server, we will be using SQL Connection, SQL Command, SQL Data Reader, and SQL Data Adapter. Along the same lines, if the database is going to be Oracle, then we use the classes that are present in System.Data.Oracle Client. Okay, and and the connection is going to be Oracle Connection, Oracle Command, Oracle Data Reader, and Oracle Data Adapter. So this these objects, the connection, command, data reader, and data adapter, these are provider specific. Whereas the data set is provider independent. We will be talking about data set in a later video session. Okay, so these are the different .NET data providers that are available. You know. If we want to connect to an OLEDB data source, for example, an Excel or a Microsoft Access database, then we use the set of classes that are present in system.data.oledb. So if we know how to work with one database, then, then it's very simple to work with the other databases. All you will have to do is to change the prefix of these objects. If it's SQL Server, it's SQL Connection, SQL Command. If it's Oracle, Oracle Connection, Oracle Command. If it's OLEDB Data Source, OLEDB Connection, OLEDB Command, etc. But the fundamental logic is the same. You know, you create a connection object, prepare a command, execute that, retrieve the results, and then finally close the connection. Okay, so in the next few sessions of this video series, what we are going to do is we are going to talk about these objects in great detail. So in this session, we are going to talk about SQL connection object. All right, let's flip to a Visual Studio. I have a simple ASP.NET web application here. Um, I have this web form 1.aspx. Let's drag and drop the web form uh, grid view control onto this web form, which is capable of displaying data. So I have this grid view 1. Let's drag and drop that. And let's auto format that so that it looks a little nice. We will be talking about grid view control in a very great detail in a later session. So let's go to the code behind file. Now, from part one, it should be very clear, you know, how to create a connection object, how to execute the command. You know, we have s seen those steps. So let's quickly, you know, create the connection object. So SQL connection con is equal to new SQL connection. Obviously, the first thing to create a connection object, look at this. I have, you know, if you look at the connection class, SQL connection class, there are two overloaded versions of this constructor. One version, you can see that here it doesn't take any parameter. If I click the down arrow, it so shows the second overloaded version. You know, it ac accepts a connection string parameter. So let's pass the connection string parameter. Before that, first let's create the connection string. So I'm saying string CS standing for connection string is equal to now obviously the connection string you know if if you have if we want our dotnet application to connect to a sql server you know it still needs to provide the information about what is the name of the server uh, what's the database that you want to connect to? What's the user ID and password? Now, it's just like, for example, let's say I have SQL Server. Now, I want to connect to SQL Server as a user. Now, I need to specify the name of the server to which I want to connect. I have to specify what type of authentication do I want to use. For example, if I use SQL Server authentication, I have to provide the you know username and password, whereas if I use Windows authentication, I don't have to provide them. 
Okay, so similarly, even for a .NET application, if it has to connect to a database, then we will have to specify what is the name of the server, name of the database, what user ID and password are you using, depending on the type of authentication. If it is Windows authentication, then you will you don't have to provide a username and password because whatever credentials that you have used to log into the computer will be used to log into the SQL Server also. Okay, so here data source which is nothing but the name of the server. So here, I am working with a local installation of SQL Server on my machine, so I'm just specifying dot. If your server is on a network, then you can specify the name of that computer or the IP address of that computer. So here, I'm specifying dot because that's, this is a local server, and then semicolon. And then the database within that SQL Server, because if you look at the SQL Server, it has got several databases. So which database do you want to connect to? Okay, I want to connect to the sample database. So I specify that using database keyword. Database is equal to sample, semicolon. Now, you know, some people call it database. You know, you might see connection strings, which is also using initial catalog. So you can either specify it as initial catalog or database. And then you will have to specify the user ID, whatever user ID that you are using, and password, whatever password that you want to use to connect to the SQL Server. Now I'm not going to use SQL Server authentication. I'm going to use you know Windows authentication. So if you are using Windows authentication, then you will specify integrated security is equal to SSPI. Okay, now if you look at this, this is our connection string, which has got the name of the server, the database that we want to connect to, and I'm using integrated security because I want to connect using Windows authentication. So this connection string is actually name value pairs, or you can call it as key value pairs. Now this is the name, and the value for that is dot, indicating that it's a local server. Database is the name, and this is the value. Uh, and these are separated by semicolon. So connection string is a string of name value pairs. Okay, so now when I am creating my SQL connection object, look at this, I can say SQL connection. Now this connection object does not know to which SQL server it has to connect to because you didn't tell it which server, which database. Okay, one way to do that is you pass that connection string to the constructor of this SQL connection object because we have one of the overloaded version which takes the connection string. Okay, so we can either do this or what you can do, just create the connection object and then say connection dot connection string property. If you look at this, this is a string property, so I can just set CS there. Okay, I can either do this or if you want to do it in one line, just pass that to the constructor of the SQL connection class. Okay, so we have the connection object created now. Now the next step is to actually prepare the SQL command. We will be talking about SQL command in great detail in, a, in the next session. So SQL command CMD is equal to new SQL command. So obviously what I want to do, I want to execute this query. So let's copy that. And then look at this. You also have to tell the command on which you know, connection we want to execute this command. So I want to execute this on this connection object. So this connection object knows to which SQL Server and which database. So you're telling this command object, okay, execute this command on this connection. And this connection is pointing to a local server sample database. So this command will be executed on the SQL Server instance I have. Okay, so that's the command object. Now, after we have the command, we need to open the connection. So connection.open, to open the connection, we use the open method, and then execute the command, command.execute reader. We will be talking about the command object in great detail in a later session, so don't worry about that now. So gridview1.data source is equal to that and we are calling the data bind method so finally once we have the data 
you know we are setting the result of the command execution as you know to the data source property of the grid view control and then we are calling data bind method finally just close the connection okay so now if I run this application as you might expect you know it will create the connection open the connection execute that command get the result and display it on this browser window okay now but have we written the code in the best possible way here no just imagine what's going to happen when when there is an exception somewhere over here okay let's say it opened the connection and it's trying to execute the query and there is an exception if there is an exception what happens your connection is left open so after this command is executed if there is an exception it will skip these two lines so you're not calling connection dot close which means the connection is left open and remember connections are very valuable resources you have to close those connections if you don't close them the scalability and performance of the application will be seriously affected that's why connections needs to be closed properly if you want your application to be scalable make sure you open the connections as late as possible and close them as as early as possible look at this I can open the connection immediately after creating it but there is no necessity okay just before I execute the command you know if I open the connection that's more than enough that's why I'm actually opening the connection after actually preparing my command and then after executing that and binding the data results to the grid view control I am closing the connection immediately okay but then to close the connection properly always put this in a try catch and finally block so what I will do now is instead of you know having it here if I have it here what's gonna happen if there is an exception here you know this connection will never be this connection will never be closed that's why let's put it in a try catch and finally block so I have the SQL connection let's put this in try so all these statements go in the try block and then if there is any exception you know we will handle that exception obviously we will log the exception to the database or email the administrator of the application you know whatever deal with the exception we have spoken about exception handling in C sharp video series but we will also be talking about exception handling in ASP.NET how we will do exception handling in ASP.NET in a later session and then we have this finally block so we know that the finally block is guaranteed to execute so obviously you know we have the connection object and we open the connection here if there is any problem any exception here you know it it will come to the catch block catch block gets executed and then finally it closes the connection even if there if there is no exception then all of these statements get executed still the finally block is executed so our connection is guaranteed to be closed that's why it's always important to close the connections in the finally block okay actually there is a better way of closing connections instead I mean if you don't want to use try catch finally you know people usually use another construct called using so I can either close the connection like this or if I'm not using exception handling for some reason and you want and you don't want to close the connection in the finally block then you can use the using statement I can just wrap this around using connection and all I do is that and I don't need to even have connection dot close so if we don't have connection dot close then how is this connection going to be closed as soon as you know the program comes to this line it will close the connection when encounters you know after this closing brace this connection is going out of scope so it will immediately close that this using block forces that connection to be closed we don't even have to call connection dot close there so important points to keep in mind connection should be opened as late as possible and should be closed as early as possible connection should be closed in the finally block or using the using statement okay depending on your need choose one of the options and this is one of the common interview questions as well you know what are the two uses of an using statement in C sharp so we have this using statement we are using it actually at two places one is on the top here to to import a namespace and then the other one is to actually close connections properly 
and this interview question is very commonly asked so I thought I'll just share that with you. On this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.